Okay, so exactly one week ago, this was the 18th. Yeah, 18th, Elon Musk tweeted that Starlink was available for sale in Kenya. And there's a link, let's click that link, which takes us to the Starlink website. But you may be asking, what is Starlink? Okay, so in a nutshell, Starlink is actually an internet service provided by Elon Musk's company, Elon Musk's <laughs> called SpaceX. Now, SpaceX, SpaceX is this company that does, you know, rocket launches to the International Space Station and so on. So yeah, they do extraterrestrial stuff. Now, Starlink utilizes satellites to provide internet. What happens is uh, this. Let me, let me, let me, let me find somewhere to draw this. A few moments later. Okay, so in a nutshell, this is how Starlink works. And because I don't have a large piece of paper, we're going to be using two, <laughs> two of these. Now, assuming this, this is the world and somehow we decided that the world is round and Africa is right over here. Kenya is probably right over here. And the States is like right over here. There is South America, something like that. So if I decide that... Using my Starlink, I'm gonna be browsing Twitter. Yeah, that is Twitter. <laughs> Nowadays. Now, Elon Musk has tweeted something, say a video. What he does when he tweets is he uploads some data. And for me to view the clip he has uploaded, I need to download some data. For this kind of communication to happen, normally there would be some internet provider of sorts that would connect this computer to this one. One usual method is using some sort of satellite that is orbiting around the earth and let's say a satellite looks something like this. So normally satellites would be like close to 30,000 kilometers above the surface of the earth but this company called SpaceX by Elon Musk has created satellites that orbit much closer to the surface of the earth at around 500 kilometers and they are Starlink satellites and there's several of them in fact there are like 4,000 of them so assuming these are low orbit Starlink satellites for me to watch that video on Twitter I'd be downloading data from one of these satellites that I'm connected to assuming I'm on Starlink and that is the satellite that would be closest to me you know and these satellites the thousands of them also communicate to each other. So probably that video uploaded to some server over here might be sent from this satellite somehow to this satellite that I'm connected to and that's how I'd receive my internet. And I over here using Starlink, oops. <laughs> and I over here at my home, you know, would have a dish just like those DSTV dishes mounted somewhere on my roof or maybe even on the ground. And this dish is what is receiving data from the satellite. So from the dish, there's a cable that goes into a router that Starlink will provide, which can transmit Wi-Fi or you could even connect it to a switch for wired internet and so on. So Starlink will give you this infrastructure. The dish, the cables, probably a power cable that you'd use to connect your router to the power and what have you. And so when you're seated right here with your phone, the phone will be connected to your router. Your router receives from your dish the dish receives all the way from the satellites that are orbiting the Earth at 500 kilometers. And that in a nutshell is how Starlink works. Okay, now then, you ask what would be the benefits of using Starlink in Kenya? The biggest benefit is definitely rural access, you know. Um, currently, if you have any form of internet in Kenya, you are probably subscribed to something like Safaricom, Airtel, and so on, on your mobile device. And what happens with mobile internet is your phone will connect to some sort of base station somewhere around you, then connect to the network that has been set up by your service provider, Safaricom, and so on. 
sometimes you might have if you are in a bit of an urban environment internet provided by service providers like you know zuku fiber safaricom themselves and so on and that fiber to the home kind of internet is actually transmitted using fiber optic cables now there are some isps internet service providers in urban areas that you know have cabled internet of some sort mostly they would transmit using like an rj45 cable and that's what i use over here it's super terrible but yeah that's what we have around here this is what i'm talking about if you see right over there that's actually an extension that brings in internet to my desk using this white cable that's an ethernet cable so for starlink your internet will actually come to you via dishes just like sort of dstv so you don't really need to have an isp setup cable so the way from nairobi to wherever you are digging along the roads you guys have seen those guys and so the biggest benefit of starlink is improved access of internet especially to rural areas like places where cables have not yet been connected and so on so if i'd like to have like higher speed internet lower latency internet over here where i am in some remote part of the country then sterling could be a good option you know because whether you're in nairobi or you are right over here your speeds will most likely be sort of around the same though yeah it actually happens like where there are too many people using the same satellites like at the same locality the internet speeds might go down but i'm sure that won't be the case with kenya because i'm sure there'll be a handful of people who will subscribe to starlink at least in the next few months to years you know so what is the cost how much are you going to pay if you'd like this faster lower latency internet let me share with you guys my screen because this is where it's at okay here we are order starlink in kenya you see you have to complete your order in 59 minutes or else you know you'll be thrown out so once you fill in this information your name phone number email shipping address and so on you can see that the service costs 6500 shillings per month to get your starlink internet but you need to first purchase the hardware this dish over here plus the cables and the router and what have you costs 88000 Kenyan shillings actually it's 89000 because this is 999.99 so 89000 Kenyan shillings plus 6500 shillings per month plus a shipping and handling fee of 3100 so you need to chuck some 100000 Kenyan shillings if you'd like to use Starlink you can see here the map loaded up and in Africa, Starlink is only available in Nigeria. Actually, Nigeria is the first country to have Starlink. Mozambique, Burundi, Rwanda, and Kenya. Oh, and Mauritius right over here. And this is not even Mauritius. This was Reunion Island. These are the places you need to go for tours and escapades and what have you. If you have the kind of money to pay for Starlink, you can always afford a trip to Reunion Island. Okay, how would Starlink compare to some of the popular competitors that they are going to be encountering in this local market? So the simplest way to compare this is how much you pay versus what speeds you get. And to get an idea of what speeds you would expect from Starlink, it's basically just look at other places where Starlink is connected and what kind of speeds they are getting. And for this, I found an interesting video by one of the guys, a great African tech creator called Fisayo Fosiro from Nigeria that I follow and uh, here's what he has to say as concerns the speeds. The highest download speed I recorded was about 260 Mbps and the highest upload speed was about 32 Mbps. 260 Mbps downloads and 32 Mbps uploads and one thing to note is that the speed in as far as Starlink is concerned you know, it's not like you are Fiber, Vilcom, Zuku, and so on, who will tell you that you need to pay this amount of money for 10 Mbps, for 50 Mbps, and so on. In this case, it's actually sort of unlimited. Okay, what we're saying is once they set up, initially the speeds will be kind of low, but they tend to actually increase until they have too many customers that they'll have to sort of find a way of capping it, maybe based on time of access or the amount of data you access. It's up to them to decide. 200 Mbps is actually quite significant compared to a lot of providers out here. 
for downloads and with 200 mbps you can watch 4k video and even play online games with no issues at all 32 mbps or let's say 30 mbps uploads is a bit low but still better than a lot of providers i can tell you for free around here let's do a quick comparison so let's take an example of liquid telecom so here we are liquid home and you can see that they do have fiber and WiMAX. WiMAX is wireless, fiber is fiber. And uh, fiber gets you up to 100 Mbps. If it's symmetrical, 100 up, 100 down, then yeah, okay, that's fine. Probably better than Starlink. But if it's 100 down and a few Mbps up, then Starlink is better. Anyway, most of these providers do provide symmetrical upload and download. So you can see here that Fiber 100 Mbps by Liquid Telecom costs 12,000 shillings per month. And Starlink only costs 6,500 we say. <laughs> so what you'd get for a comparable monthly cost to Starlink is actually their 50 Mbps package which costs 6,800. And there's no point looking at the rest of the providers because the story will be the same. Starlink will actually be a bit cheaper for the speeds they are giving you. Full stop. But the upload speed is the problem. Starlink is probably gonna be slow in terms of upload, but if you're not going to be uploading a lot of things, all you want to do is download and watch 4K movies and so on, then yeah, Starlink makes sense. But if you're like me, who wants to upload this video that is going to be several GBs big onto YouTube, then yeah. That's where I have to think twice about Starlink. Okay, the other issue, and we've already talked about this, is the initial cost. Starlink is up there, you know, skyrocketing. <laughs> These people use rockets anyway. So Starlink will cost you close to 100,000 shillings to set up. What I'm saying is in short, Starlink is going to be good for you if, number one, you have a lot of money. Number two, it would be best for you to get it if you actually live in a place where you are not going to be able to access the likes of fiber or some other kind of fast wired internet like in a rural area. Number three, Starlink would be good for you if you're actually going to be doing more of download like watching stuff, downloading stuff than uploading stuff, you know. So guys, that's my take on Starlink launching in Kenya. And uh, the big question remains again, would I get it? Again, I just might. <laughs> See you in the next one. And as always, no pressure.